Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, Neighbor put a huge boulder in front of my garage blocking my driveway. Never mess with a geologist. Dealing with entitled neighbors usually is not fun. However, every now and then someone messes with the wrong neighbor. If your neighbor happens to be a geologist, nobody would expect that person to be vindictive, right? Well, in this case, I almost felt sorry for my neighbors who had to deal with me after using a boulder to block my driveway. And yes, they placed a boulder in front of my driveway and blocked me out. Let me give you a little backstory on this first. I have a PhD in geology and live in a beautiful diverse neighborhood in Southern California. In 2019 a young couple moved next door to us. At first I was a little worried because they seemed like the college frat type. However, they were polite and actually introduced themselves to us. They did have a few parties in the beginning, but they were always respectful and kept the music down. Our driveways were right next to each other as well, making it one big driveway and they always made sure that no one parked on our side of the driveway. They seemed absolutely lovely to have as neighbors. And they were absolutely lovely as well. Until one day they just decided that they were not. See, in the driveway, near the front of it, we had this decorative boulder to split the driveway. My household only parked on the left side and the neighbors only parked on the right side. It was a little bit of an eyesore, but it worked out great with the previous neighbors. When the new neighbors moved in, we explained to them the purpose of the boulder and finding a newer divider in the future. They assured us it was no problem, so that is just what we had continued to use to divide our driveway. Until one day when the young husband next door decided that he did not like it anymore. Well, I'm assuming it was the husband. Do you know how hard it would be to move this boulder? Extremely hard. But he found a way and one morning when I woke up, the boulder was moved over a little more into my side of the driveway. It made it hard for me to get my car out of the driveway. I went over next door to see if anyone was home, either ask them what was going on and ask them to help me move it back. If they did not like the boulder, I was willing to work with them to find another way to divide our driveway that did not get in the way. However, no one ever came to the door, so I had to ask my husband to come outside and help me move it. After we moved it, everything was okay for the next few days. The neighbors stayed friendly with us and did not mention anything about the boulder, so we just ignored the whole situation and moved on with life. It was an honest mistake. Ha, <laughs> right. Again, everything was fine with these neighbors until it was not. See, one night they were having a huge house party, the music was a little louder than normal, but whatever. I was not willing to start a fight or anything over it, I just turned my TV on a little louder and went to sleep as I had wrought the next day. Except you see, the next day I had to call out, because the boulder was back in front of my driveway, except this time it was completely blocking my car. I could not even get my car out of the driveway anymore. And well, that pissed me off. So I decided to do something about it. Being a geologist I had a variety of tools and instruments in my garage and I decided that I was going to use a special auto chipper to turn this boulder into a big pile of rocks and debris. I was surprised my neighbors did not wake up to the sound of it, however they were partying pretty hard the night before. If they were awake they just thought that I was doing yard work but after I spent some time turning this boulder into a big pile of gravel, used a push broom to push the ginormous pile into the neighbor's side of the driveway so that they could see it when they finally woke up. But if that was not the icing on the cake, I decided to take a picture of it and posted it to our local neighborhood Facebook page. I included a short paragraph on the incident and captioned the post, never mess with a geologist. Many people were commenting and interacting on it and the next morning when I woke up, I was happy to see that the boulder had been cleaned up and a newer, smaller boulder had been placed where the original one was. 
At least I did not have to pay for anything. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, these neighbors are a special type of stupid, because the last person I would want to mess with when it comes to boulders, rocks, stones, whatever, is obviously a geologist. But well, let's hope they learned their lesson. Either way, if you still enjoy the stories about crazy neighbors from hell, then please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance. The next one is titled Epic Revenge. I was working as a manager in a mid-sized business. While I was there, I was assigned a new member to my team. I will call her Evil. Evil was in her mid-twenties and was pretty fresh out of college. She was the kind of person who would talk your ear off about all of her ideas and plans and what she was working on, but never really seemed to have anything to show for it. When I talked to her about clients complaining that she wasn't getting back to them, she would always have an excuse about how difficult they were, how snowed under she was and how she had written an email, but it must have gotten lost in spam, so on and so forth, basically never her fault. It got to the point where after one of our monthly meetings, I called her in and explained that if she could not get her tasks done, she needed to let us know so we could help delegate resources to make sure things were not slipping through the cracks. I'll admit I was pretty direct. Her performance was impacting the whole team and my job was to literally keep the team on track. I get that people can be under pressure, that there can be stuff going on at home which impacts work and that sometimes people need a bit of help, but if every time I ask about a project you say, yep yep everything's good, I've got it under control, and then it all falls apart and your only response is to blame the client, we have a problem. I explained that I was not going to start formal performance management or anything like that, but from now on I would like her to check in with me on Monday mornings for 10 minutes to go over objectives for the week and to check if she needed support with any of her clients. I know it is not fun to be micromanaged, so I try to keep these check-ins short and mostly just offer assistance on stuff. She clearly hated my guts though and apparently was hatching her own pro revenge. Now, part of my my role included the use of a purchasing card which was not in my name, but I had access to. I was given the card to basically make small purchases for the office or spend up to $500 on clients. The card was kept in an office I shared with another team manager where we both could access it when we needed it. One day I get a call from accounts asking about a few abnormal purchases on the card. A Photoshop subscription, a couple of Uber Eats orders, an HBO subscription, etc. I say I don't know anything about them and they should check with the other team manager. Apparently the other team manager did not know anything about them either, because after the weekend I get called into the big boss's office. After my colleague and I had denied involvement, accounts had started calling Adobe and Uber and stuff to find out where the transactions were coming from. They said that not only were the accounts in my name, they were registered to an email address with my name in it too. For example, word.roll3 at domain.com or something. I cannot describe what it felt like to be in that meeting, I felt physically sick. I could not work out what was happening, I was so shocked I did not know what to say. I felt like I was about to get fired and I could not understand how that was even possible. The director was going on about how access to the card was a privilege and that I had signed an agreement about appropriate use and so on and so forth. I denied that I had been using it inappropriately and the boss listened but I could tell he was not that convinced. To be honest, in my head I was gaslighting myself and worrying that I had somehow saved the card in Google and maybe my wife had been accidentally using it or something. It was terrible and I found myself apologizing and saying, I don't know how this happened, I assure you that I know that none of those expenses are appropriate uses of company funds. There must have been some kind of mistake, can I please have the details and look into it, etc. When I finally got out of that office, job still intact, barely, evil was waiting for me at my office door. She was grinning from ear to ear and sweetly explained that she had been waiting for our morning meeting. I told her something had come up and we would do the meeting tomorrow and she said, Oh, you will be in tomorrow? Confused, I just replied, yes, why would I not be in tomorrow? 
and she just sipped her tea and said, oh, no reason, turned around and went back to her desk. Something felt off, but I was still worrying about what had happened with the boss, so I spent the next couple of hours calling my wife, calling Adobe and doing the same legwork that accounts had done. It became very obvious that someone had been using my name and the company card to spend a bunch of money online. Had I been hacked or something? Personal info on the dark web and these hackers just really wanted Photoshop and Wendy's delivered? It was the Uber Eats that was her undoing. After getting on the phone and talking through what had gone on and obviously giving my name for the account and everything, the fellow on the phone told me where the food had been delivered. It was in our city which made me rule out straight away any notion of my data being sold online or something. Now I was suspicious and pissed. Usually I don't like to think the worst of people, but now I was. Listening to my gut, I pulled up Evil's employee information and checked her address. I pulled it up on Google Maps, dropped a pin on her place and then looked for the address Uber Eats had given me. It was the corner of her effin' block. I was furious. When she left work for the day, I got IT to give me access to her laptop. Sure enough, when I opened up her domain.com account under her listed accounts was word.roll3 at domain.com. There were some things she had been smart about. The IP address she had been using was the office, which would have tied back to me. She had even had the food delivered to a different address. She had even made a fake email address, but saving her passwords on a work computer was a mistake. I called the boss that night and explained what I had found and kept the IT guy with me to support the fact that I had not just logged into her computer and made it all up. The next day the boss called her into the office and fired her so bad there were red trucks lining up outside the building. When she teary eyed left his office I made sure I was standing in the hall sipping a cup of tea. It had gotten cold while I waited for her but it still tasted sweet. I hope she went home that night because if she did, she would have received some nice goodbye Wendy's delivered by Uber Eats. Paid for on my personal card of course. Revenge and justice can be the same thing, right? In the end, she was fired. The boss apologized and we were on good terms when I left in October for a new gig. She never apologized and I have not seen her since. The boss decided not to get police involved and neither did I. I just did not want the hassle. The next one is titled Revenge on my boss. So I hope this fits here. It felt like pro revenge but in hindsight it is quite petty. About 10 years ago when I was 19 I worked for a regional grocery store in the meatpacking department. Pay was bad and I had second shift. I came in at 3 and left at 11. It was not a terrible job all things considered. I had the meat room to myself so I could listen to music and really just not be annoyed by other employees. My duties when I showed up was to package more ground beef and other beef based products and put them on the shelf. After 5 I also had to juggle working behind the deli counter. Well, shortly after getting hired, the boss of the meat department showed back up from vacation and I was the new guy. Everything was fine at the beginning, but I found when I would clock in, the lady behind the counter, we will call her V, would not be there and there would be a line. So I would clock in. Spent the first 30 minutes of my shift doing her job. No problem, I actually like that position. Well, after the line was done I would almost always see Mr. Boss staring me down angry that I'm not doing my job. He would give me the rant about doing my duties unless customers needed my help and they almost always did but he would not listen. Come to find out, the reason V is not behind the counter is because her and Mr. Boss are having meetings in his office with the door closed. Not my husband or wife, not my problem. We can continue this dance of me covering her station and getting in trouble for it for a few weeks until an ice storm hits. I tell my boss I cannot get my car out and I am waiting on a ride so I might be a little late. 
he proceeded to fire me because this is the last straw. By the way, I had not had any write-ups. I agree, that's fine because I hate this job anyway. Fast forward two years, I am 21 and celebrating with my friends at basically the only local bar in this terrible tiny crap hole town. And when we walk in, who do I see? Why if it isn't Mr. Boss and not V but his wife. He looks at me and tries to act like it's a happy coincidence. I sit down, tell him it's my 21st, he buys me a beer as a gift and I chat him up. Enter my revenge, I introduce myself to his wife and tell her how he treated me, talking about how I would cover the deli counter almost every shift for half an hour and then get in trouble for it because it was not my job. No matter how many times I tried telling my boss I wouldn't have to cover deli if he and V were not having their daily locked door meeting in his office. She looked at him, looked at me and could not say a word. It could be read as crappy, but his wife was super polite and friendly and not in that crappy southern religious style. A genuinely nice person and I am glad I could help pull the wool to let her know her husband is a complete garbage person. And the next one is titled, Entitled Trollface Neighbor Gets Cleaned Via Power Washer After Stealing Basketballs From Kids. Thank you everyone who enjoyed the last story, here's the one where Trollface Neighbor vs my dad and his power washer. This was a long time ago and the story takes place in June slash July when all the kids were on summer break, my sister had to fill me in on how it started. The list of characters. MS is my sister, clarification I graduated from a hemorrhoid to a permanent fissure being the royal pain in her ass. Dad, our dad, sounds like Christopher Walken, old school Queens New York accent and NC, my niece, 8 years old. In addition there is NP, my nephew, 7 years old, troll face, lives across the street and she looks like a scowling troll and then EN2, entitled neighbor 2, old lady who lived next door to troll face and then me as myself, the fissure that is a constant pain in the butt to my older sister. Where MS lived was a dead end street and kids were all over the place playing. My NC and NP were going to the park to shoot hoops, but there was an incident where older kids were picking on the little ones. My NP actually got into a fight with two of them for picking on his sister. NC joined in to protect her brother, black eyes and bloody noses all around. My dad upon hearing this said, you know, I'm gonna go ahead to the store, I think I have a solution. He took off and came back to MS's house with a basketball hoop. It was a portable slash movable one and the kids were stoked to be able to play in peace. About a total of 6 kids in the neighborhood were all happily playing basketball, not bothering anyone. They would pack it up around 5pm in the evening, the best part is all the parents could look out the window and see the kids playing. About a week goes by and Trollface comes out screaming at the kids and wanting them to stop making so much noise. This is at 3 pm in the afternoon, EN number 2 who lives next to Trollface joins in screaming at the kids telling them to go home. The kids ignored them and continued to play. MS hears someone pounding on the front door and she sees Trollface with EN2 standing there looking like two creepy serial killers out of a horror movie. They scream at MS about how the kids are making so much noise, the kids being disrespectful to them and threaten to call the cops. MS tells them to leave the kids alone and get off her porch. Trollface demands that the basketball hoop be taken down, MS shut the door on them. Well, it was assumed Trollface called the cops because the cops come out to see what is going on. The kids playing basketball, which is not a crime. The police officers told Trollface that they can play and if there is noise after 11 pm then they can issue a citation. The kids are home in bed at that hour, Trollface was pissed so she thought if she and EN number 2 sat outside to taunt the kids that would be enough to get them to stop playing. It was like trading one bully for another type of situation, if the ball would come close Trollface would take it saying it is her ball now and refuse to give it back. She did this every day waiting for that ball, I guess she figured taking the ball away would stop them from playing, it didn't work. One 
day my dad shows up, MS filled him in in what is going on and I guess he figured this would be the perfect opportunity to test out his brand new power washer. He grabs a lawn chair, puts it facing directly across from Trollface, he had the power washer set up ready to go, he takes a seat as Trollface glares at him while EN number 2 goes back in her house. EN2 didn't want to piss my dad off because he helped her out with the artwork and knew better than to F with him. I show up and I see my dad sitting out front wondering what the F is going on. Me? Dad, what are you doing? Dad, I'm just enjoying the day. Sings a little song. Boom bada boom. I'm gonna be cleaning out a rat's nest soon. Suddenly he jumps up and turns the power washer on. Dad, hey, hands off the wall, rat. Trollface, it is mine now. My dad smiles and turns to me. I bet you five dollars that girl has a wig on. He shot the power washer at her hair and her wig flew off her head. My NP was quick to collect the basketball while Trollface is screaming in horror trying to cover her bald head screaming. Trollface, you goddamn prick, my hair, oh god my hair. Dad, watch your filthy mouth. If you want bald so bad, go play with your husband's rat. She ran into her house and I guess her husband was out that day. The best part majority of the neighbors were out doing yard work, walking or just enjoying the day and they saw it all go down. I pulled my wallet out and slipped my dad five bucks. Dad, looks like I cleaned the rat's nest out. Job done, I'm gonna go get some coffee. Trollface called the police and they came. All the neighbors gave statements of what Trollface had been doing and she had been making nasty remarks to the kids when they were outside playing. Nothing happened to my dad but they insisted he not spray anyone in the future. That woman had taken 8 basketballs total, the cops got the balls back and told her if they are called out again, they would be arresting her for harassment and property theft. The best part was no one saw Trollface or EN2 outside anymore while the kids were playing ball. Eventually Trollface and her husband moved. MS and our father were quite pleased when they heard the news. Dad drove up to MS's when Trollface and her husband were moving out the last of the stuff. My dad was playing, another one bites the dust blasting out of his speakers. He thought it was the funniest thing ever. And guys, this story was actually a follow up to a story we read a few days ago that was titled Entitled Neighbor Steals Dogs and Then Returns Them After Destroying His House. So yeah, if you enjoy the crazy neighbor stories, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, it really means the world to me and it helps me out tremendously. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.